I'm going to be careful and not put this one up on the screen just because there's some things in here I got to skip over. He wanted me to leave out because he's a doctor and uh, promised bullet points, not use my name, specialty of medicine and city. Okay, so um, he wants me to call him a neurosurgeon in a, Atlanta. He has 60 pages of court documents. Let me just summarize what he sent over here. He meets his ex-wife in medical school. He had just turned 22, graduated from Harvard. She was the first girlfriend. I'm assuming this is, you know, who he lost his virginity to and maybe the same for her. We don't know. There were a lot of red flags. She clearly had borderline personality disorder, daddy issues. Her dad went to a federal prison for four years while she was in college for bank fraud. She was also a pathological liar. You guys will start to notice that the apple doesn't typically fall very far from the tree. If there's problems in the parental units, and she grew up in that household, That's that was the bar to which she set her life to, right? Um, I think they say that most of uh, children's development is usually done by the about the age of seven or eight or nine, I think somewhere around that. Anyway, so dude goes to federal prison, bank, pathological liar. Somehow, due to my own internal deficiencies, I, now this is a smart guy. He went to medical school. He's a neurosurgeon, right? Even though his spidey sense has picked up on this, he continues to accept her excuses for the various lies that she told. She insisted that we have sex for the first time when I was 22, a month after we met her, and then demanded that we get married right away since I took her virginity. She told me that she was a virgin when we met, and it turned out that she had actually been with four other guys before I met her. I found this out right before the wedding. I would have called off the wedding right at that point. Again, if you have options, if you've spun plates and you've contrasted and you've seen the good from the bad, then you have the ability to make those choices. His spidey senses said something to him before the wedding when he learned about the information, but he proceeded anyway. Her excuse was that she had been raped and went into a downward spiral. I want to sneeze and say a bullshit, but I don't have a sneeze coming, but you get the idea. Uh, four other guys, downward spiral. It was basically pretty women like the movie Syndrome. I wanted to fix her and tend her physiological, emotional, and material needs. Captain Sabaho is what we call that. We had two sons together, now 21 and 19. Shortly after the birth of our first son, she became ultra abusive. Hmm. Abuse, big red flag. Had he dated her a little bit longer? So one of the other things that I learned, which I picked up from Sean, is Tactical Guide to Women is a great book. And I talked about it in my book is before you do anything like march into a slaughterhouse of marriage, date for at least a year and a half, two years, so you can see what she's made of. He bangs her a month after he meets her, and then she insists on getting married right after that. So he's basically known her for two months. You don't get to know somebody in two months. You're dating the actor, you're dating the representative. Anyway, two sons, uh, she becomes abusive. He would have seen that likely if he dated her for at least a year and a half, two years before anything. She got her first job at Johns Hoskins as a dermatologist. And since I was still a resident in training, began to belittle me and use her status as the breadwinner for the family for three years to bully me into beta status. We moved and I became the breadwinner as a neurosurgeon, but the abuse never stopped. I could fill a podcast with hours of examples of her absolutely traditional cultural background. Despite all of this, I maintain a great relationship. See, traditional cultural background is usually what guys usually shop for. And you think after two months of dating that you've got enough frame around it? No, year and a half, two years minimum. See what she's made out of. Despite all of this, I, I maintain a great relationship with my sons after about 10 more years. Couldn't handle it anymore and made plans, at least mentally, to exit quietly, divorce her, and move on. In mid-2013... I was looking for Disneyland tickets for my kids on the family home computer and found that she left her email open. Here we go. I found a file with a treasure trove of pornographic videos she had made with another guy. I was floored. She was always passing herself off as being religious and pious and constantly judgmental of how other women or girls that my kids went to school with had skirts that were too short. And yet she's making porn with other dudes while she's married to this man and abusing him. And he's a neurosurgeon. I tried to divorce her, but she kept threatening to kill herself. <laughs> Most guys would have just walked away and let her, right? I stayed for another 18 months, 
18 months. He signed up for another 18 months of torture. Moved into an apartment before moving back into the house when she claimed an overdose on benzos. And we worked out a post nutville agreement, giving her the $6 million mortgage-free house for another decade while I paid half the costs. Primary physical custody of the kids, so she, she got the kids, and another million to get the kids through high school. I was supposed to see the kids nights and weekends as their schedules allowed. I filed for divorce in 2015 when I realized that she was still having an affair. The details are unimportant, unimportant, but I filed and moved out of the house into a small apartment, having given virtually everything I had away to this animal. By now, he's calling her an animal. <clears throat> she immediately began lying to the kids about why dad moved out of the house. What was I talking about earlier? Ali parental alienation, where the mother makes up this horse shit about what a terrible man the father is, which is almost entirely always crap. I became despondent and nearly hopeless until mutual family and friends approached me and told me that my ex-wife had told them. One of, the, one of them was a female OBGYN, and she told me that she would help me see my sons if I showed her proof of the video. I reluctantly gave her a copy and fast forward to a little and fast forward a little to family law deposition where my ex-wife alleged that I had physically assaulted her, excuse me, that I had physically assaulted our 16-year-old at tennis camp. It was a complete lie. I admitted to the distribution of the, vi of the video to this female doctor. My wife filled criminal revenge porn charges against me and used the threat of criminal trial to settle demands for $6.5 million. $6.5 million. That's a lot of money. I refused and ultimately went to keep in mind, she's banging other dudes on the side, making porn and leaving it on the computer while this dude's trying to book Disneyland tickets and she wants six and a half million dollars and the house. I refused and ultimately went to trial where she stated these outrageous lies that I'd use the video to coerce her into a one-sided divorce agreement. Oh, shocking now she's making up stuff. I was convinced based on these lies, but it was but it was ultimately expunged. As the legal system and the DA's office became aware of her efforts to extort me and her perjury in the matter, they did nothing despite ample evidence and sworn statements. I'm telling you guys, women get away with so much in family law. We're almost done here. The assistant DA called me and told me in this climate of Me Too, in the state that he lived in, it would be difficult to get a perjury conviction. This is a very liberal state, by the way. It would be difficult to get a perjury conviction on uh, of her or her att attorney. And had extensively discussed internally in the DA's office. She was a side bearer here as well. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, my ex-wife was in charge of cash receipts for my practice and stole $800,000 in cash over eight years. This biatch stole $800,000 from his business, made porn with some other dude when he's buying Disneyland tickets for the family, wants six and a half million dollars in a settlement and a six million dollar home and stole 800 grand from this dude from his practice over eight years oh hang on it gets worse and spent hundreds of thousands of the corporate credit card on her purses shoes personal travel to see her boyfriend first class international airline tickets for her parents while we were married i'm sure she kept a good bit of the cash in a safe somewhere without my knowledge dudes if you're going through a divorce and you have a terrible boating accident and you lose your nano ledger and all your cryptocurrency, don't feel bad. I'm telling you right now, it's okay. I've seen a lot of this. Far worse than what could ever happen. <sighs> anyway, she kept copies. Christian, used attorney general, went through federal grand subpoena, blah, blah, blah. Eight years comparing to computer records. More bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Never charged me. Did amend my tax returns. He spent $3 million on attorney fees over five years of the divorce. There's no limit to the extent to which a crazy woman will try everything to her disposal to ruin a good man. I'm going to say that again. There is no limit to the extent to which a crazy woman will try everything at her disposal to ruin a good man. Doesn't matter how good of a guy you, you are. Doesn't matter if you're a stand-up dude. Any woman, not all, but any woman can destroy a man in family court. Not all will do it, but any woman can. You have to understand that. There are a few takeaways here. A man should never marry before the age of 33. Every man should be aware of borderline personality disorder. You should never stay in a marriage with a crazy woman for the kids. Every man should have a prenup no matter what they get married. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
that's it. I mean, I don't want to go on banging on that one. It's but you get to the you know, like you get the point. That's just one example of the millions of divorces that happen every year in North America. And yet every single day, some dummy wants to go march into the slaughterhouse that could completely derail him in a direction that ain't going to be good.